What's up everybody? So today in this video what I'm going to be showing you is how to pass custom form fields from an e-signature that has been signed through e-signatures.io back into your zap. So in the zap where it says the trigger is signed by all signers, we want to pass those fields that the signer filled out more than just that it was signed, but we want to bring those fields back into Airtable. Uh, using this method. So I'm going to show you that today. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS, and what we do is we help business owners probably just like you help you optimize your information systems. So that's in stuff like uh, the back-end systems of your business and communication and stuff like Slack, planning and stuff like Asana, uh, project management tools and resource and stuff like Airtable or just a, a wiki to manage a lot of your business assets, uh, digital assets. So if you're interested in any services, you can check out the link down in the description. Without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So what I have pulled up here are a few different tabs. So I have two zaps that I'm gonna show you. I have two, or I have the email with the, the signed document, and then I have the template. And then behind here, what I'll pull up is just a quick air table to show just the real simple process that I have in here. And yeah. So to get started, the first thing that you'll need to do is create your e-signatures account and create your template in e-signatures. And then the, the most common fields are placeholder fields, which are in squiggly brackets. And then you have your whole contract. And I think this is just a really simple like template contract. It doesn't, none of this should be actually used, uh, but you can put your contract in here. And then at the bottom here, we have form fields. So what I found to be successful with these form fields is if we come over here and put a value in this API key, if you want to pull these back through. So you can see uh, the first one was client name, then company name, then date. So those are our three fields that we're gonna be pulling back through. Um, and I believe you can also like pre-fill those. If you wanted to have default text there, you, you could. But for our example, we're not gonna have any default text there. We just want to pull back in for you, I guess for you, it might be like the, the address, uh, maybe like secure information, like from a, like for accounting or anything like that. You can pull that in, ask those questions, and I'll show you how to get that information back into a tool like Airtable. So up here in this, this is our, this one is once it's signed, uh, but this e-signature right here, this is to send it. So just to really quickly show you how that's set up. Basically, what, there's this automation view over here which is filtered to be this status right here. And once it's that status right there, then it will trigger the automation. So here in Zapier, we have a new record in that Airtable view and basically we just change that status. It goes and creates that contract and e-signatures and pre-fills like the name, the email, and a few other things in here. I only have one signer for this example as well. One really important thing is you want to keep, like put this piece of metadata as the record ID from the trigger, from the sending trigger. And then I just included this one placeholder field here for like the date. So while I'm talking here, I'm gonna have a new one come back through here and go to my email so I can show you. So I'm gonna trigger this and it'll trigger in the background while we're talking about this. Uh, but the other important thing is you want to add some signer fields in here. So here we have client name, company name, and date. So I just typed those in there similar to how I typed in date one being one of our placeholder fields right here. And in here, uh, I have the API keys for these. Now I don't know that this is the only way to do this. I've just found this to work for me. So if I add the signer fields in here, it pulled them through into the, once it's signed by all signers. So after that, you can add like all the emails and everything, like the email body, the email uh, the subject and everything, and then you can test it. I have mine turned on right now. Uh, after it sends, I just have it go back to Airtable and it'll only go back to Airtable if it's successful. So it'll only continue. It goes and finds that record ID and updates the the status of the e-signature to say that it's sent. So if I come back here into Airtable, you'll see this changed from uh, via the API, changed from this, this status to e-signatures sent. 
So that's perfect. So that's exactly what we need. So now I'll go into Gmail and find the email. So here we have another one, uh, one minute or zero minutes ago. Uh, this is just a really, really bare bones test here. So if we now review this and sign, it'll ask us for a few things. So if we scroll down here and keep scrolling, what it's going to do, and actually you can see it pulled in that date field. So the placeholder field worked. And then here for name, we'll say Andy clone and the company is clone enterprises and the year is 2001 September 2nd and then sign it as Andy and of course this isn't a real signature or anything but if we came back in here to uh, Airtable the second step is not turned on yet so now I'm going to show you how to do that and this is probably the, the biggest area where people need help so once it's signed, we test that. So we're gonna come back in here and test it for a new contract. I pulled this one in 12 minutes ago, but if I load more here, this one will come in here. So it should be for Andy. Yep, you can see it's for Andy. And we can see that these signer fields came in. Now, these signer fields did come in. However, we're gonna to need to be doing a little bit more work to make these usable. So the I include two like Zapier functions in here, usually. Uh, these are really important. One, because if you're having multiple different e-signature requests going through one e-signature's account, there's no way to like say only when this type of contract is signed. It's just when any contract is signed, it's gonna trigger. So you wanna set up a new Zap for each of your e-signatures unless you're able to add a router in here, which I'm not gonna show a router. So I just add a filter for each one. So for this e specific e-signature request, the filter, like the name, the title has to match the title of this. So like for this one in the trigger, we add the title be unique contract title for first name. So as long as it has unique contract title, uh, or just in this example, unique, then it will continue and we can see your zap would have continued. But I just like to separate those that way each zap, because they're also probably going to a different place. For example, if you have an employee onboarding form, that's going to be kept track of in a different table than a new client onboarding form. So you want to be able to point these in the right directions. Now, this is probably the next most important part is this action right here. And this is, I think it's called like a separator. But basically, you're going to come in here, choose Formatter by Zapier, choose Text, and split, te split Text. And what you want to do is you want to choose the input here. So I'll show you which input to choose. So in here, if we come down here, you'll have like all of your signer fields, and then you have all of your signer, signer field values. And we'll choose signer field values right here. And you can see the separator is a comma. So you can see there's, these are all comma separated. And so that's all you have to put there. And then you wanna choose this, you wanna choose all as separate fields, not as line items, just all as separate fields. And so now you can test it. And if we retest this in your view, you can see all of these are nice separate fields. So now we can continue. And now you wanna choose update record in Airtable. And this is really the big benefit here of knowing when something's signed because this is a completely different zap. So we don't specifically have that record ID from the first one, but because we passed it through as metadata, you can pick that record ID from the contract that was signed and you can update that specific record. Now, obviously it should be in the ba same base in the same table, but knowing which record ID is highly important here. Now what you can do is you probably have multiple fields in your Airtable base uh, that will show like whatever your custom fields are. So if you came in here and added a field for like the, maybe the address, you could do that. You could add lots of different fields in here for whatever you want to be collecting in that, in your e-signature. And then if you come in here and refresh, that field will pop up right here. So now what you wanna do is you can just come in here and put in all these signer fields. 
So you can say, I want Andy and the date. And so you can pull in this dy dynamic, which changes for every single automation and this static right here, which is the space comma space. And you can pull that stuff back through. So now if you just press continue there, you can skip that test and then you can turn it on and it'll work. And it'll pull those, whichever field you specify, it'll pull them through to the e-signature back to Airtable, assuming they're filled out, uh, which if they're required, they'll have to fill them out. So that's the basics of sending e-signature requests. You'll just need these two zaps. So if you wanna take some notes here and say, new record in view in Airtable, create this contract, pick your contract that you want to create uh, and then update that status. I think that's a really useful, that way you can see that it was sent. And then for here, uh, update when it's signed. So contract is signed, only continue if it's the type of contract that we want to be tracking for this example. And then split that string or split the array into a string. And then finally update the status and update this custom fields. Uh, another thing that I did not mention in here is for attachments, if you want to upload the PDF attachment, what you can do is there should be contract PDF URL. And if I came down here and actually tested this, I can show you what that looks like here in Airtable. So you can see I uploaded the attachment here. It should say like not valid, yeah, it's a demo, but it pulled everything that was in that PDF that's created after it was signed, including it should be all of the fields that I added in here. So right up here somewhere. Yeah, Andy, Clone Enterprises, that one date that I added. Uh, and then it has an, also has an audit trail. So I think this is really fantastic integration, especially for the price. And if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments and I can try to answer them for you. But if you're considering using other e-signatures tools and you're not quite sold yet on e-signatures, you can check out this video right here in the end screen and you can go look at a side-by-side -side comparison of probably the most popular, the top e-signature tools on the market and you can compare what those look like. Obviously I showed you some good functionality of e-signatures.io here, but that gives you the full breakdown if you go click the video in the end screen right there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and without further ado, I will see you in the next one.